What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me this week. Hope you all had a great New Year's. Uh, apologize for the, the really nasal sounding voice. I'm sick in case you couldn't tell. Um, but didn't want to leave y'all hanging. Have some cool stuff going on here and wanted to at least put out a quick little video uh, and show what's going on because we've got Kribo breeding season going on. So let's take a look. Try and get this big guy all in the frame here. Easier said than done. Seven plus feet of them. This is the, the big man on campus. This is Bandit. And uh, he looks a little, a little rough right now. So during the breeding season every year, he can pick up the pheromones put out by my female and I'm assuming any other snakes in the area um, or the room. And he will like actively rub his face, just like he saw it on the side of his enclosure. Just rub and rub and rub because he wants at the female. The tricky thing with breeding Kribos is, it seems, from my experience, there's a very small window of receptivity for the females, like a, a week or so tops. Um, and the male's ready, but she isn't. So you gotta be careful because these are a species that is what we call an Ophiophagus species. And what that means is that they will eat their snakes. Uh, they'll eat anything, but they will eat other snakes and last season uh, My first breeding attempts I paired them Before she was ready and left him in there for far too long and Something happened and they flinched he flinched she flinched something happened and he grabbed her and grabbed her by the face Fortunately, she got his lower jaw and uh, he couldn't consume her, but I had to rush home and unlock them and she looked pretty beat up. I still have some photos that I can can share, but you know, they're not exactly easy to look at. But she did end up making a full recovery, feeding a few days later and producing a clutch for me. So they're pretty darn resilient snakes. Um, they've literally just been ambient in the room with all this cold dropping down into the low 60s and that's what they need but uh, yeah they're pretty amazing snakes you just got to make sure they're well fed and hydrated that's the key during this breeding season uh, he's ready but the way I gauge if she's ready is I will start doing some intros I'll start pairing him with her just like briefly for like two minutes supervised and if she's running away and tail rattling, she's not ready. And each time I do it, she shows a little less and less protest. And eventually, um, she doesn't run away or protest at all. And then he starts showing me a little more keen interest, a lot of head twitching, very focused on something. And then he starts lining up with her body to position himself to breed. And, and she becomes very, uh, receptive and just submissive and lets him do what, his, do what he does and um, at that point I'm okay leaving them together unsupervised so and I'm hoping now that her window of breeding and cycling is just past that he'll stop rubbing his beautiful face because as you can see it looks pretty gross but these things shed and grow so darn fast that he'll shed that off in probably two sheds and it'll Back, back to brand new. So, this is the big guy. You can see beautiful black tail. Beautiful snakes. Big boy. This is Dry Marcon Melanurus Melanurus. This is a 2013 male. So, this guy is nine years old this year. My female, I believe. Is a 2016 putting her at six this year so and one of the unique things about this species is the males are actually the larger of the two so as far as their dimorphism goes the males are gonna be bigger which is very 
different from the majority of snake species where if there is some size dimorphism, females tend to be larger for egg deposition, fat storage, all the other reproductive capabilities. But in this species, it seems like uh, the females don't need to get quite as large and maybe the advantage for males being this big is because they're just a top predator in, in their ecosystem. These guys can be found in uh, Central America, Costa Rica, even in Northern South America. So, big active hunters. They're not constrictors. They grab stuff and crush it and start eating it, which is why it's so dangerous when they're pairing, because it can go from zero to bat real quick. So, this is Bandit. He is a, a modeled animal, meaning he's got some black flecking coming through a lot of his gold scales but really amazing animals a very trustworthy snake as far as handling goes as long as you don't shove your thumb in a hide to lift it up or anything like that you'll never have to worry about them biting wonderful snakes I've taken them to school presentations and passed them off to children without a worry they're great very trustworthy animals um, and then the other elephant in the room is everybody thinks that they're disgusting poo casos and they can be if you're feeding them a lot of fish and it's peak summer and you know their digestive system's going you got to keep up with their metabolism so yeah it can seem like it's a lot but it's it's really not as bad as everybody makes it out to be and I've had species that are worse so I love these things they're pretty cool so this is bandit this is my big male I'm gonna put him back because he was kind of still waking up we're gonna take a look at the female here, and then after we look at her, I will uh, show you and superimpose some clips of some breeding action that I've been catching lately. I'll show you what that looks like, because it is very distinct behavior. Really cool to see, and uh, after last season, and moving into this season, and everything kind of going as planned, uh, I feel like I have a very deep understanding of these snakes, so uh, hopefully I can share that with you today. So let's take a look at the female. You're all right. So, everyone, this is Smokey. Yes, Smokey and the Bandit. Um, as you can see, first off, she's considerably smaller. Like, definitely smaller. Just at about six feet. Smaller head. Got those beautiful eye stripes. Beautiful big head plates, those big scales. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful snakes. Very intense look. They look venomous to somebody who doesn't know. And uh, the nice thing about these guys is they really show you when they're cycling. So it's hard to see, but she is thick and plump. There's some scale separation going on laterally. She has been breeding for me. And uh, so yeah, this girl, very receptive right now, although I think that weak window is just closed up. The male's no longer sawing his face off at the door today. And the only remaining scars or marks from their accident last year, you can see a little blemish there, some darker color and scale irregularities a little bit right there. And then, I don't know if you can see it, right on the side right there there's a little little contour on her lip where it kind of just goes whoop and that was where she got bit her whole head was in his mouth fortunately her eyes were untouched and it was just some superficial damage but her head was pretty sliced open back here it didn't look good um, and she powered through it and she's a champ so she ended up eating a couple days after that and then breeding and producing babies for me. So although I didn't have the greatest success with the incubation and hatching, we, we got almost all the way there. So this year we're gonna check off a few more of those boxes and really dial it in. So this is my girl. She is, as I said earlier, 2016. And she could get a little bit bigger, but not huge. Like I said earlier, the males are the really big ones. The females get big enough to breed, but a six foot colubrid in the jungle is a 
formidable animal. So if they can breed at six feet and protect themselves and eat at six feet, it doesn't necessarily make sense to get bigger. The males, maybe there's just more territoriality. I don't know. Maybe the bigger males get to breed. Younger ones get fed upon. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, some really unique colubrids. And then another fascinating thing is their eggs come out with all these little crystalline structures on them. They look like uh, they're covered in little crystal sandpaper, something or other. It's crazy. So, but yeah, that's kind of all that's been going on here lately. All the pythons are either cooling down and doing nothing or breeding a little bit, which isn't really eventful to show and I'm not going to interrupt anything. So didn't want to leave y'all hanging. The Kribos are doing their thing, keeping us going. So I figured I'd bring something to you guys. So I uh, hope you enjoyed checking out these animals and learn a little something about them. And uh, stay tuned. I'm going to put a couple uh, cell phone clips here at the end of some of the breeding activity that I've been catching recently. So anyway, uh, take care everyone. Stay safe. And I uh, hope you're feeling better than I am. And I will catch you all next time. See ya.
Thank you.